Head over to BoardGamePrices.com to find the best price on Century A New World and thousands of other games. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here and today we're going to be venturing off into a new world. Now a while back, Century Spice Road came out and then the second game in this series, Eastern Wonders, and now the third in the trilogy, Century A New World is here. Designed by Emerson Matsuchi and uh, published by Plan B Games. Today I'm going to show you how this game works. I'm going to cover just the game itself, not the combinations of all the other games. But let me show you how it works and I'll see you on the other side. <music> In Century A New World, every player has their own player board, they're going to get their own workers, and over the course of the game, you're going to be gathering different types of goods and placing them on your board, storing them there, and then hopefully turning them in for specific scoring cards for points. So here we have the board set up for four players, where we have the modular board, and we have the scoring cards up here. Now you're trying to have the most points in the end, and most of the way you'll be getting those points is by completing these scoring cards by turning in the goods that are on the bottom of these cards. Now this modular board has four parts, uh, different quadrants. Uh, these three boards are always the same, but then here there's different boards that you can place here, which gives the game a little bit more variability. On your turn, you have two choices. You can either place workers or retrieve all your workers. If you place them, if it's a spot that shows the worker spot here, meaning there's no other player there, you put that many workers there. So in this case, I could put three and I could get this. In this case, it's one of those brown cubes. And here are all the colored cubes, and they go from least valuable to most valuable. You have corn, meat, tobacco, and fur. We used three workers to get one fur because these are the most valuable cubes. Now when you get goods, you're going to place them right in these spots. You can hold up to 10 goods. Now if another player wanted to go to this spot, they always have to pay one more by default. So there's three here. They would have to actually pay four. And the ones that are getting replaced would actually be given back to that player. And that's important because on your turn, you're either placing workers or retrieving workers. But if somebody bumps you off, you're getting those workers back for free, which allows you to take more actions without having to skip a whole turn by retrieving all your workers. Now, most of the other spots give you goods like a green cube, a red, two red, three yellow, two yellow. But some of them like this allow you to upgrade. This allows you to upgrade any two cubes up one level. So like two yellows to two reds, or a red to a green and a green to a brown. Or you could do one up two levels, so from a yellow to a green. So these allow you to trade. This allows you to trade, put, give a green and get back two reds. Give back three reds, get two browns. Give a brown and get six yellows. And give two yellows to get a green. Those are the spots in this specific game that are all set up by default. Now when you go to one of these fort spots, you pay the workers as normal, and you could do, you get three options. You could either just take this bonus tile, you could turn in the goods to get the scorecard, or you could do both of those. So for instance, I could turn in these cubes back to the bowls from my player board that I've already gotten, and I would get this card, which is going to be worth six points. I could also take this, which essentially is just three points. Let's show you how those work. So this card would go next to your player board. It's worth six points at the end of the game. And the bonus tile goes here. You can only have three of them throughout the game, so you have to pick wisely. This one just gives you three points. Now, also notice that the scoring card has some iconography here. This says anytime you go to a spot that has this icon, you'll immediately also take a yellow. Now that icon was this one right here, so anytime I go to either of these two spots, instead of getting two, I'd get three. Instead of getting three, I'd get four. So a lot of these scoring cards give you some bonus. Then all these cards are going to slide down like this, and this top one is going to come out here so you can see what's coming. And you, know, you only have to pay one worker here, two, and then three, so the newer cards you have to spend more workers to get there. Again, showing you the different bonuses here, like this one, anytime you go to a spot with that icon, you get to use one less worker. Same for the basket. This one actually allows you to gain a worker. Because at the beginning of the game, you only start with six. I actually have one out on the board now, but you have a bag of them that you can add new ones to your board and be able to use them if you get one of those other bonus cards I just showed you. Now, some of these different bonus tiles have different things on them. Like this one has two hammers or, you know, a bag, uh, you know, a hammer in this. So what happens is each of these cards have sort of an icon on the, on the top and you're doing some set collection. So essentially this one says, hey, look, if you have any cards with that on there, you'll get two points. This one says for each set of these two, you'll get three points. So if I'd gotten this card and I'd gotten something like this that matches, uh, you know, uh, these two, then that'll be worth three points at the end of the game, assuming I actually took this and have it on my board. 
Now, some of the cards have this icon on it. Now, there's some of these tiles laid on specific spots that have this logo at the beginning of the game. And when you get this card and you score it, you get to take any one of these. Now, these work similarly to, you know, trying to get those bonus cards. It acts as one of these symbols when you're trying to do some set collection with some of these bonus cards. Uh, some of them give you cubes and some of them give you straight points. But when you take one of these, it also unlocks a new spot. So this is, hey, you could turn a brown for these three. And so as players get these, it's going to open up more spots and give people uh, many more options of things that they can do on their turn. And this will continue until any one player has eight cards and then you finish the round off. Then you're going to score all the points on all the cards and then you're going to use your bonus tiles. This is again, just three points. This is three points for every two cards that I have with the hammer. So I actually have two sets of those. That'd be six more points. And this here, each set of the hammer and the bag, I have two sets of those or so another six points. Whoever has the most points is the winner. And one of the coolest things about this is that you can actually combine it with the other Century game. So Spice Road to New World, you'd use this setup and rules. Uh, this uh, Eastern Wonders, which is the second game, and this one, you'd use this one. And if you want to use all three, you'd use this one. So you can combine them in all sorts of different types of games. All right, there's Century, a new world. First of all, let's talk about what I liked about it. Beautiful art on the box and on the cards. Those scorecards are just beautiful, all original illustrations. They really fit the theme, they fit the feel of the game, and it's just a pleasure to look at on the table. This game, much like the other Century games, has simple mechanisms but good depth. I love that in a game. I mean, you're simply just placing workers or retrieving workers on your turn, that's it. I like that when you're placing workers that you can bump other players off so it doesn't stop you from going there, but it actually benefits them because they don't have to waste another turn retrieving workers because they just got a bunch back and maybe they can do another action before they have to retrieve workers. I've always liked that bumping mechanism in worker placement games uh, and, I, and I definitely love it in this one. I love this, the point card abilities and icons. This is sort of that next step, you know, I, I feel like this game uh, is has the most sort of interesting hooks in it than, than any of the three, but it doesn't necessarily make itself more complex either. I love that you're getting those point cards for not only the abilities, hey, when I go here, I can spend a less, less you know, one less worker. Or uh, I go here and, and, and uh, you know, I get an extra cube of this type. Uh, or I get more workers to actually use, things like that. But you're also getting icons and you're doing that set collection. That brings me to the next thing, which is those bonus tiles. It's so fun to get these different tiles and try to, you know, focus on, you know, which of these cards I'm going to try to score because, oh, if I get two of these and I'm going to get three more points. And it's fun that, that those are kind of hooked together between the bonus tiles and the scoring cards. And it kind of changes which things you might usually go for. You might have a set of cubes and go, wow, this card is going to be easier for me to get. But if I get, maybe take one extra turn, I can get this other card, which is going to complete a set, which is going to be worth three more points. Is that worth it for me or not? Those decisions are really fun in this game. I like unlocking the new places on the board, getting those tiles, which gives you, you know, one of those sort of set collection icons, but it also unlocks new things that you can do on the board. So as the game goes on, you're going to get more and more choices. I really like that. I like the variable board where you have the three set up and then you have that fourth one that could be different each game. And of course, uh, really cool that you can mix these with the other Century games. I'm hoping to do a video about how these combine sometime in the future. Uh, this one is the favorite of mine in, this, in the series. Uh, I really feel like it has, again, more going on with the hooks of those abilities and the bonus tiles and working and kind of getting those together. Uh, but it never felt like it overcomplicated itself. It really stayed true to the simplicity of the Century series. And then I really like worker placement in general. So that's why I think this is my favorite of the three. Uh, anything negative? Well, the workers are tiny, tiny, tiny. I really wish they would have made the workers bigger. I'm sure there's probably good reasons why they didn't. Um, plan B, I'm sure they didn't. They know what they're doing. But from a con consumer standpoint, if we don't think about publishing and think about why things would need to be or what price point things need to be at or what they need to fit on, we would like. I would have liked the regular standard size meeples for this. Of course, it probably would have put the price up too high. But who knows? Uh, the theme in this game, much like the other centuries, is absent. It's very much painted on. Uh, there really is no theme here. I wish there. You know, I wish the game had a little bit more thematic elements. But some games, you know, I can kind of give a pass. But this one, yeah, it's it doesn't have a theme. So if that's important to you, well, then that's a negative on your side there. As long as, and it was for me too. I kind of wish that there was more going on thematically that made sense. Uh, but I knew what I was getting with Century as well. Uh, and also, you know, the Century series have always been games that I really like, I enjoy, I don't turn down when people bring it up to play. But when it comes to that sort of engine building, unlike, like, you know, Spice Road or, you know, contract, you know, gathering, like in here, 
I still seem to prefer sort of Splendor for like the gateway style of game like that or Gizmos for the sort of, you know, the next step game. This one kind of falls in between them. It's, it's a little bit more going on than Splendor, but a little less going on than Gizmos. So it does fit itself nice in between those, but those two are sort of my favorite in this genre. Um, so that's what I think about Spice uh, Century uh, uh, <laughs> New World. So if you like this, uh, this style thing, if you've played, if you've never played any of the centuries, can you go to this one first? Yes, I think there's nothing big about this one that would make you go, well, I really have to play the other ones first. Uh, I, I can recommend this for, you know, a streamlined, easy to teach game that's accessible to new gamers, but that gamers are engaged with as well. It's a great intro to worker placement as well. So this looks interesting to you. Check it out. That's been Century New World. This has been the Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships through board games by helping you find the next one you'll love. This video was shot on a Game Topper, the ultimate gaming accessory. After successfully fulfilling their first Kickstarter, Game Toppers are taking the world by storm. Now you can get your own portable gaming top by participating in Game Topper's Kickstarter 2.0 starting June 25th, 2019. New styles, new sizes, and amazing new game mats. Go to GameToppersLLC.com to enter a full Game Topper system valued over $1,000 to also bring you to the Kickstarter project page and to Late Pledge.